Well, good morning. This is uh, 11.35. We're five minutes late getting started on uh, uh, Tuesday, the 12th of March, 2019. This is supposed to be a linear algebra class, Math 237. But right now I'm the only one in the room, so I'm going to get started from the current slide. Um, yeah, I'll wait and do any announcements when people come in. So let's get going where we left off last time, which is, was, is, will be, uh, beginning of 2.4. No, I'm sorry, I think we, yeah, we got started in 2.4, and we're on example 2 on page 75 in 2.4. All right. <clears throat> now. This is a process we're going to be beginning now, and we're going to be following this type of a thing through for much of this section. There's a little bit of it that you might find uh, awkward to follow at first, but I think after a while you see that it, it makes sort of sense. Um, now, and there's also a part that you think, why do this rather than doing it the easier way, but there is a reason, a method behind the madness, so hang on to it. Um, the A part of example two here, it gives you a matrix, um, an elementary matrix, E, okay, let me get my pen set up, okay. Here's an elementary matrix E, okay? It's a three by three elementary matrix. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one. Now certainly that is an elementary matrix. To remind you, what is an elementary matrix? It's one that you do a single elementary row operation to an identity matrix. What have we done here? we've exchanged rows 1 and 2. So this is the elementary matrix that exchanges row 1 and 2. Now we're going to multiply that by some, any old matrix here, A. And this matrix has to be 2, or 0, 2, 1, 1, negative 3, 6, and 3, 2, negative 1. And we're going to perform that matrix multiplication, a 3 by 3 by 3 by 3, that's going to give us a 3 by 3, okay? And let's see what we get. <clears throat> all right. And by the way, all elementary matrices are always square because they came directly from an identity matrix. They can operate on matrices that aren't square as long as the operation makes sense, as in multiplication. Well, 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 is going to be a 3 by 3, so... And the reason is not just because they multiply to be the same size. These two are equal, and what you have left over is 3 by 3. Okay? So, let's do the math. Okay, first row, the one line entry, first row by first column, 0, 1, and 0. That's just going to be a 1. The 1, 2 entry, first row by second column, 0, minus 3, so that's a minus 3. The 1, 3 entry, first row by third column, 0, 6, and 0, so that's just a 6. The 2, 1 entry will be second row by first column, that would be a 1, 0, 0, that's just a 1. No, sorry, I didn't do it right. Um, First, second row by first column, 0, 0, 0, so that's a 0, okay? The 2, 2 entry is second row by second column, which will be a 2, 0, 0, that's just a 2. And then the 2, 3 entry is second row by third column, that would be a 1, 0, 0, so that's just a 1. All right? <clears throat> the 3, 1 entry be third row by first column, and that would be a 0, 0, 3, and the 3, 2 entry will be third row by second column, 0, 0, 2, and the 
three three entry will be third row by third column, which is a zero zero minus one. Okay, there's our new matrix. Uh, that's the product of those two. How does that compare to matrix A? Well, with my lines under it, maybe it's a little confusing to see, so I'm going to take the, the lines out, and maybe it'll be a little more obvious. So we'll take out that line, and 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 this line, and this line, and that line. They were just there to remind us of locations. They weren't really necessary. Okay, maybe taking a look at this, do you notice? Well, the difference between the product matrix here and matrix A was, guess what? You exchanged the top two rows. That's exactly what your elementary matrix had done to the uh, identity matrix, how it differed from the identity matrix. That was exchanging the top two rows, and that's what multiplying it on the left by an appropriately sized matrix does for you. Uh, uh, multiplied on the right of an elementary matrix, it does the same thing that the elementary matrix did to the, uh, the step that you did, the one uh, linear row oper or elementary row operation that you did, uh, it does exactly that. So let's look at the B one. Okay, here we got a elementary matrix of one zero one uh, zero. Would be elementary matrix. It was a zero one half zero and zero zero one. And this time you're going to multiply it by matrix A. And this is going to be a different matrix A. One zero negative four one. 0, 2, 6, negative 4, and 0, 1, 3, 1. Okay, so there's your, a different E. This time, what is E done to the identity matrix? Multiply the second row by 1 half. Okay, let's operate on this, and let's see, it, can we? This is a 3 by 3, multiply by 3 by 4. Well, certainly you can multiply them because the 3's are the same, and your answer will be a 3 by 4. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? The one line entry will be the first row here by the first column there. That's just going to be a 1. And then the 1, 2 entry, first row here by the second column there, 0, uh, zero, zero. So that's going to be a zero. And the one, three entry will be first row by third column, negative four, zero, zero. So that's a negative four. And then the one, four entry will be first row here by fourth column there. And that will be just a one. Okay. Now, let's do. The 2, 1 entry, second row by first column, 0, 0, 0. All right. Uh, the 2, 2 entry will be second row by second column, 0. 1 half of 2 is 1 plus 0, so that's just going to be a 1. And then the 2, 3 entry will be second row by third column, 0. 1 half of 6 is 3 plus zero. So that's just going to be three. All right, sorry. Got something in my eye, I think. <clears throat> the one four, I mean, two four entry is going to be second row by the fourth column. Zero, one half of negative four would be negative two plus zero. So that's just a negative two. And then the three one entry will be third row by first column. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, the yeah. uh, three two entry will be third row by second column zero zero one, and the three three entry will be third row by third column zero zero three, 
and the 3-4 entry would be third row by the fourth column, 0, 0, 1. All right. Ugh, sorry. I don't know if these lines are in the way or not, but it's easy enough to get rid of them on this. Probably not on your paper, but on this it's pretty easy to get rid of them. So I will just to make it look more like the original matrix so you can distinguish any differences you see. And you'll notice the your matrix A here and your product matrix here. First row is identically the same. Third row is identically the same. The second row is exactly half of your uh, second row in, in matrix A. Exactly half. You divided everything by two, which was exactly the uh, single elementary row operation that you did on the elementary matrix, on the identity matrix, to produce this elementary matrix. And that's exactly what it did for you here. It took one half of the uh, second row. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I'm having a little bit of congestion problem. Sorry about that. All right, let's clear those two so we can do the third one, the C part of example two. And this time we have an elementary matrix E. Let's see if it is indeed one. That's a one, zero, zero. Two, one, zero. And zero, zero, one. Okay, what elementary row operation have we done to the identity matrix to make this elementary matrix? That is a zero there. It doesn't look a lot like one, but it is. Okay, well, you multiply the first row of the identity matrix by two and added it to the second row. Sure enough, that was an elementary row operation. That's the one we did to get this. So let's take this matrix E and multiply it by matrix A. This goes back to being a 3x3. Three three. It doesn't matter. As long as you have three rows, because you have three columns of the previous one, so as long as the columns and rows of these match, then you can do this. And it does. This is a 3x3. Three three. 1, 0, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2, 3. 0, 4, 5. Okay. All right. This is three by three by three by three. The middle two threes go out, and that leaves you a three by three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. <clears throat> Seems like the longer it goes, the more congested I get. The first class this morning was down the hall in room 205. It was hot in that room. And then when we came to, I came to this room for my second class, this room was really chilly. I wonder if that did. I didn't notice it then, but I wondered if that started the process of <clears throat> messing up my head. And but I had a fairly good crowd in there last time, and it didn't notice the cool anymore. But now, goodness gracious, ugh, it's hard to talk without clearing my throat. So to get the one 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 entry here, do the first row here by the first column here. You get one and two zeros, so that's a one. The one two entry is first row by second column is zero zero zero, so that gives you a zero there. The 1, 3 entry here is first row by third column, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay? Now, the 2, 1 entry in your product matrix, oh man, aching all over. I don't know what's going on here. 2, 1 entry would be the second row here by the first column there. That would be a 2, minus 2 is 0, 
plus zero, that's a zero. Okay? The two two column, two two entry here will be second row, second column, zero minus two, zero, so that's a minus two. Um, and the two three entry here will be second row by third column, which is a minus two plus three is a plus one, so it's just going to be a one. I think I'm going to make it here. The 3 1 entry is the third row by the first column, which is a 0 minus 2, 0. Um, the 3 2 entries is the third row, second column, 0 minus 1 and 0. Be a minus 1. I think I did that wrong. gracious. I'm almost dizzy feeling in this doing these rows and columns isn't helping that at all. So let's start back over. The 3 1 entry, third row, first column, 0, 0, 0. Okay, I don't know how I got a minus 2. So let me erase. I think I was doing, redoing something from that. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's a 0, I'm sorry, 3, 1, three, one entry, 0, minus 2, 0, yeah, minus 2 was right, okay. Okay, the 3, 2 entry. Something that isn't feeling right about it. 3, 2 entry is 0, minus 2, 0. So that's a minus 2. And the 3, 3 entry is a 0, 3, 0. Oh. I see what's wrong. <laughs> Oops. Wrong thing. I'm sorry. I wish someone had been in the room to catch me because I think someone would have done so. I wrote the elementary matrix wrong. Okay. I can't get my eraser to come up. There it is. Okay. All right. I knew that it was coming up with wrong answers, but I couldn't see why they were coming up with wrong answers until I got far enough along. So let's take these out, that out, and that out. Okay. All right, let's do this again. With the correct third row, 0, 0, 1, multiply it by the matrix A, the 3, 1 entry is third row by first column, 0, 0, 0. Perfect. The one, the three, two entry, which is this one, will be zero, zero, four. And the three, three entry be uh, zero, zero, five. Okay. Now, this may be just a tad harder to see a relationship here, but hopefully you will see it. All right. Glad you're here. Okay. The one and only. I didn't know it was the last one. What's that? I didn't know it was the last one. Yeah, well, you're the first one, too. Okay. All right. So here's Mohammed. Okay. 
and let me turn on the projector. I'm getting very bored of talking to myself. But also, uh, my head's been clogging up on me again. I don't know. I guess maybe a change of temperature. And we've doubled the class size now. Okay. All right. Oops. You talked in. I thought you were. Okay. Okay. It's coming up slowly here. Excuse me. Um, go over just a couple of minor details here. I hope they're fairly minor. Uh, I don't think either of you, well, maybe I was. Hold that back just a little bit. Um, in this class, I've only had one research paper turned in and one first test turned in. And that means for... Is there a second test in here? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, the uh, uh, that's out of seven students. So that means five students I've received Nothing you know, know, turned in. I know I'm one of those. I did. I'm missing the last question. The okay. Last question I'm struggling with. But okay. I think I'll get it. All right. Good deal. Uh, What's that? Can I sit down? What's that? <laughs> Can we omit the last question? <laughs> What's that again? Can I omit the last one? You can. I'll just not omit it when I'm writing it, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's not omission. Yeah. For you. Omission. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, you well, can't tell the well then I suggest we do them okay. if we're gonna do it mutually. Okay. Okay. The uh, sometimes they ask for this. They're supposed to every term, but this term they've been so busy with SACS preparation, documentation, stuff like this, they may have forgotten about it. Now I haven't checked the email lately, so I don't know for sure if they've asked for it or not, but they periodically will ask for shortly after midterm midterm progress report, which means we turn in people who have these or else at midterm. And with no grade at all, that's not going to be too hard to figure out what that's going to be. So please, if you can, get me something soon. I shouldn't be done with the research papers, but that's the name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've already started. Yeah. Already started. yeah. So okay. So yeah, if you'll just get something to me in every class. Now, if they've asked for it, and I've got to turn something in, it doesn't really count for anything, doesn't hurt your grade point or anything, but it may just get you bothered by people saying, uh, we, we said notice you're failing at midterm, uh, is there anything we can do to help with tutoring, with, with, and maybe that's something you would like to have happen, or do you need some counseling, you know, you, know, you might just get, be getting bugged by something. How about that you, if you just, uh, maybe, you know, just, you know, things going on, you just need extra I can't hear. How about if you just need second checks from them? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grade is failing because you know. Well, I need, I need to check too. Hey, yeah. since we on this topic, I know you got a lot on your plate. Would you be able to write me a letter for um, the scholarship that I'm going to put out there? Okay. Just let me know what I need to. Okay. Who I'll send it to, what I need to say, or whatever. So. All right. So anyway, uh, if they ask for student, oh yeah. Here's, yeah, there's a thing for UAB coming up right here, this poster. Yeah, it's a... Uh, oh, it's 10 weeks. Yeah. But that one, this one is 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Yeah. And they will... And they got to add me an extra one on there. Okay. Take that type of thing. Okay. But they provide housing, food, and transportation to UAB and away from UAB once. Like, do they uh, give you a car? No. <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you got a car, they pay for your gas. They pay for your gas. Like, I did one program there, like, one summer. Um, like, you know, you just, the thing is, is you write it off at the end. It's hard to have, like, they don't give you advance. Like, you know, from the beginning of the program, you, like, you just keep your receipts and anything. Like, even, uh, like, there was some type of, if you go, you was traveling, you travel to, uh, around A&M, yeah. and uh, during the travel time, whatever you eat there, 
if you receive uh, make way and brush your food there. But in uh, town, they don't get brush the food, but outside of town, they don't get Is it is at the end though? At the end, you just be turning turn yeah. all of those papers and they will add it to the chair, uh, to the stipend. Uh, yeah, and how many hours a day was it? Like, would I be able to work at night still? Like, here? Um, with the program that I was doing now. Uh, yeah. You gotta be two times. They keep you pretty it's from, busy. It's, it's, from the one I was doing from, it was eight to, we was together eight to five. We just, we're not working eight to five, like, we're not like on the, on the lab yeah. eight to five, but like, the one I was doing was the environmental stuff. We went, we went to the, the Harbor Craig, and spent like a week in a, taking water samples. We went to, uh, you know, some, another stream up north, like that. We, it was a lot of traveling, but, you know, it was fun. I learned a lot. But, yeah. 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 Is it, is it just Monday through Friday? Yeah, that was, no, that was Monday through Yeah, Monday through Friday. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 yeah, I've had a few students try to do like online classes and stuff like this, doing programs like that. But they do keep you really busy, so you don't have a lot of time to to do it. But a few students have done that before. They may not allow you. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But now the good thing here is they're feeding you on campus and housing you on campus, so you. Yeah. You don't have any bills that you have to do. You, well, you, they just give you yeah, a I would still have bills. So. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't stop. I would still have to pay them. Yeah, but if you're bills. waiting till the end of the term to get reimbursement, yeah. you're, you're you're eating that up as you go, you know. Yeah. But when you do go out of town and and then take it, you do receipts from that. It's yeah. 10 weeks. That's almost three months. Yeah. So for me, my bills don't wait for three months to get paid. I, I have a house. So yeah. those bills need to get paid every month. Yeah. yeah, that's the reason. I so, so with the five thousand, do they pay you that bi weekly? That's at the end. At the end of the program, they. Oh, okay. It's paid at the end. You have to complete. You have to complete the program to get. That's the thing. Okay. Like, you know, well, you'll you'll need to check with them on that because different things. Yeah, Yours is at A and M. Different, but the one I did yeah. like is upon completion. Yeah. Then they're right. You know, they add uh, whatever like. Whatever you see your expensive fee, you receive to give them, they add that to the stipend. Right. And at, at University of Alabama, one that one of my students was in, I think they paid weekly or bi weekly. So you didn't have to wait till the end. You got yeah, it, but you had to participate to get it. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it is a, a great opportunity. Okay. Okay, so that was the first announcement. Uh, they may be asking, for, yeah. And the deadline is the 15th. That's Friday. This Friday. Yeah. And you do live in the dorms at UAB. So you check in there. And okay. Uh, so there's the first announcement that maybe. It may already be out there, they're requesting it, I don't know, but if they do, I have to turn it in. Okay, second, um, I don't know if you have any classes Thursday afternoons, but um, there is a faculty meeting this Thursday, but they say we're not supposed to cancel any classes, so the likelihood you wouldn't even notice it, if, even if you do have a Thursday afternoon class. But in case your instructor had to be at the faculty meeting for some reason, then watch for that so to look into that so that's this thursday and then friday normally i have office hours on the birmingham west campus from 8 to 12. i will not have those friday because i've got an eye appointment right across the street here at uab west and uh, that's 8 15. so i'm hoping to be through with that by 9 15. i don't know if that's reasonable or not but uh then i'll try to make it over to the birmingham west campus so that'll be sometime around 10-ish or so, maybe earlier, maybe later, or likely later, but anyway. All right, those are the only announcements I know about. Let's get back to this. So I just had done this. This is before uh, Muhammad came in. Uh, last time we were learning about an elementary matrix, okay? Is this an elementary matrix? 
Yes, it is. An elementary matrix, uh, here's what it takes to be an elementary matrix. Remember, we only have three elementary row operations. One is exchanging any two rows. Number two is multiplying one row by a constant other than zero. And the third one is adding a multiple of one row to another row. Now, what the, you're doing that to is the, the identity matrix. So if you start with an identity matrix and add a multiple of row one to row two, two times row one plus row two, yes, we would get this. So this is an, an elementary matrix. It can only be one elementary row operation done to an identity element. You're multiplying that by A. Now, A didn't have to be square. All A had to have was three rows. However many columns it had, one column, two columns, three columns, 15 columns, as long as it had three rows and this had three columns, then you can multiply. This is three by three by three by three, so it came out being that. And I did the multiplication. And I was coming out with the wrong answer, and then I realized I wrote this third row wrong here. So anyway, I got it right. That is it. Now, do you notice any similarities or differences between the A matrix you started with, this any old common matrix A, and what we wound up with? Any similarities? The second one, the first one and second one. Okay, the first row and the third row are exactly the same. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. The second row has changed. And how has it changed? Well, guess what? If you multiply the top row by 2 and add to the second one, you get a 0 there. You get a minus 2 there. Multiply that by 2. And add to that. You get 1. Yes. That's exactly the operation, the elementary row operation you did here to the elementary to the identity matrix to produce the elementary matrix. You've just done it here to make your thing. Now you might say to yourself, self, why would you do this? It would be would that be the same uh, would that be the same situation? I mean same case on every on every elementary matrix. If you did if you multiplied the second row by 3, that's all you did, multiply the second row by 3, and then multiply it from that, you multiply that row by 3. If you um, swap these two rows, you know, elementary, thank you, swap these two, multiply it by here, it will swap those. That's exactly what it does. Elementary matrix does the same operation you did to it to any matrix you multiply by. That will fit. That will multiply by it. That's exactly right. Now, in my mind, uh, coming up with the elementary and then doing a multiplication of all those elements, it's quicker just to do the, the elementary row operation on here. But there is a reason that we, that we even investigate this, and we're going to get to it fairly quickly, okay? Hopefully. So... That's what we've noticed. These elementary matrices, by multiplying them by a matrix, it does the same operation that you did to the elementary matrix to, to get the elementary matrix. Okay? In each of the three products in example two, you're able to perform the elementary row operations by multiplying on the left by an elementary matrix. Now, this next theorem, and it's done without proof, generalizes that property of elementary matrices. So I think I'll write this in. I'll erase this and go here. This is theorem 212, representing elementary row operations. Let E be the elementary matrix. I'm just going to call it the EM, elementary matrix, obtained by... Tang got sort of separated there, performing an elementary row operation, that's the ELO, on an identity matrix, I sub M, they chose it, I don't know why they keep changing their subscripts. Okay, that's what we're going to do. 
E is the elementary matrix obtained by forming a single elementary row operation on some identity matrix of dimension M. If that same elementary row operation, E R O, elementary row operation, is performed on some M by N matrix. A, then the resulting matrix is given by the product, product EA. Okay? Now, sort of the backwards of what we just did. Uh, we multiplied them, saw it gave the same product, so we saw the product was the same as the uh, elementary row operation being performed on, on A. So you see, all it requires is, is E, and for some reason it's cutting off this, if E is the elementary matrix obtained by performing this on an IM, what's required now, since you're multiplying from the left, is E, A, then A has to have M rows, and it doesn't matter what, how many columns, N columns. It could be the same, could be different. It has to have M rows. Okay. Now, that's what we just saw. There's your theorem without proof that states it. Now, example three is going to take us through in pretty gory detail, okay, uh, and do some of this. Go back and read. Uh, the order of multiplication is important. Okay? The elementary matrix immediately to the left of A corresponds to the row operation performed first. Okay? Okay, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Most application of elementary row operations require a sequence of operations. For instance, the Gaussian elimination usually requires several elementary row operations to row reduce a matrix. This translates into multiplication on the left by several elementary matrices, and the order is important, okay? Uh, the one that you do first is one right next to A, and then you do the next one, the next one, the next one. Because you're multiplying from the left, so you have to stack your elementary row operations further to the left. Okay, so what we want to do is find the sequence of elementary matrices that can be used to write the matrix A in row echelon form. Not reduce row echelon form, row echelon form, just Gauss elimination. Here's the matrix A. 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 0. Okay. Last time I wrote the matrix wrong and that threw me off. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, if you were trying to row reduce this, what would be your first operation? Exactly. Okay. So the elementary um, row elementary matrix that would do that would be what? First, what size does the elementary matrix have to be? Okay. Okay. Now, remember where we get an elementary matrix from the an identity matrix. An identity matrices are always square. Okay. So it can't be a 4 by 3 or 3 by 4, one of those. Those are rectangular. Okay, 4 by 4. But remember, we're multiplying the elementary matrix on the left. <coughs> so the number of columns in E has equal number of rows in A. 
Remember the E is an N by N or whatever, N by N multiplied by this has to be an N by something. So if that starts with the three, three by three. Okay. So and what did you say you would have done? Exchange the top two rows. What would that be your elementary matrix? What would that which elementary matrix would do that? You're doing it to, you do that same operation to an identity matrix, a three by three identity matrix. Zero, one, zero. One, zero, zero. Zero, 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 one. That's the elementary matrix that would do that very thing. Okay? Now. So when you multiply those, you just add nine to what happen? That, yeah, when, when you multiply this with the E on the left and the A to the right, you would get that same operation. Okay? And you can do it if you want to. Uh, just remember this is on the left and this is on the right. So it would be first row by first column. So it's sort of backwards. Zero, oops, zero, one, zero. So that would be a one. There's the one. Okay, and the next one would be um, first row, second column. Zero, negative three, zero. Okay. Uh, the negative three is just moved up there. So yeah, what you're doing is just swapping those two. And when you did the next one, this would be this row by this column. Zero, zero, zero. See, that's come down here. The next one would be one zero zero. That's come down here. So, yeah, that one we done that. So yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Okay. Now what they're doing is actually doing the elementary row operations, which I'm just going to do this right. Row one and row two <coughs> are swapped. Okay. And that's what we did to get that. And when we did it here. The new matrix here would be 1, negative 3, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 5, and 2, negative 6, 2, 0. Now, every time I see that last row, I want to divide by 2, okay? Uh, they're not having us do that yet, so we won't. But you could do that. But then you have to do a, a new elementary matrix for that. And what would that be if we had done that? If we divided this row by two, what would your elementary ratio be? Uh, it would have been uh, negative three, 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 negative Top row would be a one zero zero. The next row would be a zero one zero. The third row would be a uh, one half. zero zero one half. You just change that. Divide the oh, third yes. row by yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry, I should have let you go on. I think you would have said it right the first time. All right. Now, what's the next operation you would do on this to row reduce it? What do you want to happen next? Okay. They're going to take care of it by what they do. What would you do next? I, I, I'm with you. I would have divided that by two before I even wrote it down the second time. But I would have done two at once, and they don't want you to do two at once. They want you to do one at a time. So what would they do, you think? What do you want happen? You want a one there? We got it. You want a zero there? We already got it. We don't have to do a thing for that. Okay. Yeah, negative two row one. Plus row three. Got it. Let's do that. That'd be a one, negative three, zero, two. A lot of writing. Zero, one, three, five. And now the new row would be zero, zero, 
two, negative four. Perfect. Okay? Now, what elementary row operation would have done that same thing? This we're going to call E2. All right, we keep getting them. All right, good deal. We're doing example three at the top of page 76. Okay. One zero zero, because we didn't change anything in the first row. Zero one zero didn't change anything on the second row. Yeah. <coughs> right? Yes. Okay. Because you did the same thing. Just imagine your identity matrix there. You've done negative 2 times row 1, add it to row 3. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 2 times this is plus 1 is going to be 1. So that's exactly what your elementary matrix would have been. Okay, now, we are now in row echelon form. Not reduced row echelon form, but row echelon form. So we're where we wanted to be, okay? Oh, no, we're not. One more step. One more step. Yep. <laughs> no, we, we follow lockstep by what they tell us to. We're not independent thinkers, okay? You got to be. Yeah. Okay. Now, this isn't row echelon form. Not yet. One more thing. Okay, you had a 1 here, zeros below it. First non zero entry in row 2 was a 1. Oh, zero. now you can divide row, two, row 3 by 2. That's it. Okay. So, row 3 divided by 2 is the new row 3. Okay? Or times 1 half if you wanted to do it that way. So, what would your last thing be? 1, negative 3, 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 5, 0, 0, 1, negative 2. Okay. And what elementary op matrix would have produced that same result? 1, 0, 0. Zero one zero. One half. Perfect. So we could have done it up above. It would just change our order of things, but we still would have had that. Okay. Now. Um. They then do these multiplications and do them this way, okay? And this, by the way, they're now calling matrix B. Matrix B is row e what they call row equivalent to matrix A. It's, it's very, very similar. Okay, um, somewhere here it said, yeah, row, yeah, these two matrices A and B are row equivalent because you perform these operations on them. So here's the other way you could write B. B would then be equal to E3 times E2 <coughs> times E1 times A. Okay. Because if you started with A and then multiplied to the left. But you see, in this order, it doesn't matter which you do. You know, you can do it in any order you want to. But they have to be in that order, but you don't have to multiply them that way. You know, if you don't want to. Uh, because you could just simply do multiply these two do that and do that. That would work too, but you know, we did it the other way. But this should produce the same result. 
Now they actually do it. Uh, we've already shown that they do work. So basically when you did E1 to A, you get this, okay? Because that's exactly what we, we did arm waving and did that motion. We didn't do it all. And then if you do E2 to this one, we showed in the last example, that would have done the same thing to, to, to this row. Okay? And then we didn't show, wait, we did. The last example had one like this, did one half by this, and by this, and you get that. So yeah, that will produce that result. Okay. Now, I just don't have enough room on the page to go back and do all those multiplications, but we've already done them like that, and we can. So here then, goodness gracious, my eyes are stinging like crazy. I don't know why. Uh, here's the definition of row equivalence. We've been talking about it and used that term before, but here's actually the definition. Let A and B be M by M matrices. Okay, M by M, M by N matrices. Matrix B is row equivalent, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as RE, is row equivalent to A when there are, there exists, I would say R, but they say exists, a finite number of elementary matrices and they're going to name them E1, E2, E3, dot, 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 up to E sub, what do they use? K. Okay. Such that Now, here's the key. That B, that's like we said before, that's going to be row equivalent to A, is E sub K times E sub K minus 1 times E sub K minus 2, dot, 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 down to E sub 3 times E sub 2 times E sub 1 times A. Okay? That's going to be what B would be. Okay. Now, you might still say, why? It's so much easier just to do row reduction. You can skip some steps if you want to and stuff. It's just easier to do. Well, there's a reason. And we'll get there ultimately. Okay? Now, just a reminder. For a matrix to be invertible, what's one thing that has to be? Square. Has to be square. Does that mean every square matrix is invertible? No. Okay. Just because it's square doesn't mean it's invertible. If it's invertible, it's got to be square. Okay, so you know that. Not all square matrices are invertible. But every elementary matrix, however, is invertible. Moreover, the inverse of an elementary matrix is itself an elementary matrix. Now they just give that to you. So here is the next theorem, and it's pretty short, so I'll put it right here. If E of his elementary matrix, yeah, that's great. if E is an elementary matrix, okay, then E inverse is also, E inverse exists and is invertible. And, well, it exists and is an elementary matrix. Okay. Its inverse is an elementary matrix as well. Okay. Now, the inverse of an elementary matrix E is the elementary matrix that converts E back to the 
identity matrix that it came from. Okay? So here are some examples. I think I'll start on a clean page here. E1 is this matrix. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, what do you think E1 inverse might be? Any ideas? In other words, if you did E1 inverse to this E1, you should get back to the elementary matrix. So what would it take to get that? I mean, to the identity matrix. You just swap the same two rows again. So that is also going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Yep, that's it. It's identical. That's row 1 becoming row 2 for both of those. Both of them. That's exactly what you do. But if this first one swapped them, the second one swaps them right back again. So they look just the same. Identically the same. Okay. Now the next one is, here's an E2. Now these, just for your cultural enlightenment, Notice, oh, they're not, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I turned too far. These are the same three we had on the previous page, identically. So if E2 was 100010, zero, 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 negative 201, that is an identity matrix, right? Now, what would be the inverse to that one to take us back to the same? Identity matrix we had to begin with. What's that? I don't think so because then you would take. If it, okay, let's do it. One zero 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 one zero negative two zero one. If it were the same thing, I'm not saying it is. If it were, that meant you would take this matrix, operate over into that. Okay, what you would do would be row 1, uh, minus 2 times row 1, added to row 3. Well, that would again give you a minus 4 here, and uh, so then you just, you got worse. Okay, so you don't quite want to do this, but it's close. <coughs> All you do is change the sign there. Because if you did that and did twice row one added to row three, twice row one added to row three, that would give you a two here. That adds to zero. That adds to zero. That stays one. You get right back to being your identity matrix. So two, two. At a multiple of one row to another row, you you multiply by the opposite sign. But everything else is the same. Okay? So there's your inverse for that identity, okay? elementary matrix. And then the next one was E3 that we had before was 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 half. What you reckon its inverse matrix will be? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Two. Okay, because if you did this, to this one. Okay, the first two rows stay exactly the same, and you get zero, zero, double that, and you get one again. 
you get back to being your identity matrix. Okay? So, if you kind of think about it this way, reversing two rows is reversing two rows. I mean, that, that, that was pretty simple. That's identically the same. But here you multiply by one row by a number and add it to another row. To undo that, you have to multiply by the opposite and add to the same row. And that's exactly what you do. So you're, this is an additive inverse here. Okay. Whereas this one, you multiply a row by a non-zero number, then you have to multiply by a reciprocal to get back to the identity matrix. So this is the added inverse, this is the multiplicative inverse, this is just reversing the same two things. So that one does stay the same. Okay. Now, what we do, and we go till 12.45, so we've got a little over five minutes. So let's do theorem 2.14. Do you need this one anymore? Okay. A square matrix <coughs> A is invertible if and only if, that symbol represents if and only if. Another one is IFF. Those are just shorthand notations for if and only if. It can be written as a product of elementary matrices. A square matrix is invertible if and only if it can be written as a product of elementary matrices. Okay? Now, and the if and only if says you have to go both, both ways. Okay? Now, if you think about There's something I do not like about their proof here. Okay, yeah. Um, I was thinking they were writing this matrix as the zero matrix, and they really are. It's, it's a column matrix. It's just saying that you've got a homogeneous system, okay, and that's okay. But it's the result that I want to, to show you, okay? Um, if this number of elementary matrices would reduce, okay, remember what it is when we're doing row operations. And, and they have a system that is homogeneous, that everything's equal to zero. So then you do the matrix A and the zero column vector, and that is a zero. That's what you're wanting to reduce. Now this is a square matrix A with an augmented solution matrix on it. And then you start doing your row reduction to A until you ultimately get it down to I. But because that's a zero, 
the end, nothing ever changes there, so you get down to I0. So this, these are row equivalent with each other. A and I, I are row equivalent, certainly because they got there. Well, how did you get there? You did a number of elementary row operations. So you did, they end at K, I think it is. So uh, I would be E sub K times E sub K minus 1 times E sub K minus 2, if I can find my... Okay. It's hard to see there because I've got it too close. Okay. Uh, times dot 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 finally down to e sub 3 times e sub 2 times e sub 1 okay and all these you operated on a from the left okay now if that's the case now a remember you're assuming a is invertible so it is the case so you've got it down to i okay well then Guess what? You could have taken e to k minus 1, or k inverse, okay, here and multiplied it here, okay, and this becomes the identity matrix here, i sub n, or whatever the dimension is, and then done the same thing here, multiplied by e sub k minus 1 inverse, so e sub k minus 1 inverse and you just keep doing that until you get all these knocked out and basically what you wind up is e sub 1 inverse times e sub 2 inverse times e sub 3 inverse dot 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 e sub k inverse let's see do I want to do oh I forgot my one there let me write the others in there. E sub k minus 2 inverse times E sub k minus 1 inverse times E sub k inverse. Okay. Oh, times I. And that would equal A. So guess what? You've shown that A is the product because all inverse, okay, that's an identity matrix, which is a, well, not really an elementary matrix, but this is a product of elementary matrices because the inverses of an elementary matrix is an elementary matrix. So these are all elementary, so the product of these times I, which means the product of these is equal to A. So, sure enough, you can do that. You just kind of do it in reverse order. Okay. I had hoped to get an example four, but I don't think we're going to have time to do it all. Aren't we at the witching hour? So we will start with example four next time. Okay. Now, what does this leave us for homework exercises? Okay. I think you can do any of the odds one through seven. I think you can do any of the odds, either 9 or 11. You can do 13 or 15. You can do 17 or any of the odds 17 to 21. And stop there. We'll pick up with 23 next time. Okay. Good deal. We'll see you Thursday. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Well, you're not coming tomorrow? Huh? Oh, I thought, oh, you come Wednesday, that's right. I thought you came for both classes. You just come for the one. Okay. Oh, oh but you are in the Monday, Wednesday class. Yeah, right. Right, okay. Okay, good deal. All righty, see you Thursday then. And see y'all, see, yeah, I see both of you tomorrow too.